Welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ending April 27, 2018. I'm Sophie Antel Gibert and I'm joined today by our senior investment strategist, Paul Eidelman. Good morning, Paul. Hey, Sophie. It's a pleasure to see you. Yeah, thanks. The market has certainly given us a lot of topics to cover this week. I'd like us to focus on three in particular, though. First, the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield. Second, earnings announcements. And third, global central bank meetings. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield. That actually hit 3% or touched 3% earlier this week for the first time since 2014. Yep. In your view, what was driving that and what's your outlook? Yeah, there have been a couple of contributing factors. I think really importantly recently we've seen a rally in commodity prices where uh, crude oil, uh, the West Texas Intermediate price has moved up to around $68 a barrel. And that's a pretty significant shift uh, relative to the last 12 months and, and commodity prices have started to stoke some fears of inflationary pressures building in the U.S. again. And so that's been somewhat, somewhat of a headwind to the bond market. Um, on top of that, too, it seems like um, fixed income investors are getting more confident that the Fed will deliver on uh, the rate hike guidance that they've been talking about for a while now. So we've seen the bond market reprice its Fed outlook to something like three and a half uh, rate hikes for this year. And so that's been a significant shift both in terms of the market implied path for the Fed and the market implied path uh, for inflation. And collectively, that means uh, higher interest rates. In our view, our macro forecasts have kind of been at those higher levels for a while now already. And so what we've seen is the market kind of converge closer towards our own view on um, the likely path for Treasury yields. And so we think even though this is an important milestone with Treasury yields hitting 3%, we view that 3% level as likely being uh, the top of the, the hump in the path for yields going forward. Uh, and so broadly speaking, I think for the last several years we've been talking about higher interest rates. Today we're starting to see the risks uh, for Treasury yields as being much more balanced than they've been in the past. And that's a, a pretty significant and important shift in our views. Well, and I know you've been watching the 10-year Treasury yield mm -hmm. closely anyway, yep. um, and also its relationship to the two-year Treasury yield as a potential indicator for the next recession. How is that relationship looking now with the 10-year Treasury yield having risen this week? Well, both short-term yields and long-term yields have moved up. So we, we pay a lot of attention to the slope of the curve, as you mentioned. That's still pretty flat now. Uh, the spread between the 10-year and two-year bond is around 48 basis points, which is close to the, the flattest the curve has been for the cycle so far. Um, and if we continue to see flattening like we have over the last year or so, it's not unreasonable to think that the curve could potentially invert uh, in late 2018 or early 2019. And if we see that happen, I think that'd be an important uh, early warning sign that uh, we're getting very late in the U.S. expansion. Uh, so we're not there yet, um, but that's definitely still a risk indicator that we're watching very closely right now. Shifting gears a little bit to corporate earnings, in the U.S. earnings announcements continue to be relatively strong, and yet stocks were flat this week. What was going on there, and also what trends are you seeing in terms of earnings globally right now? Well, I think this has been a puzzle for a lot of uh, investors this week and probably last week as well, where the U.S. earnings season has been, by almost every measure, pretty outstanding. Um, we're seeing around 80% of companies beat on uh, their earnings results, which is much higher than uh, historical norms. And when yeah, you look that's at impressive. The, and when you look at the growth rate of earnings, it's close to 20% in the first quarter for S&P 500 companies. And that's wow. obviously like a, a very, very strong number. Part of it reflects the tailwind from corporate tax cuts. But under the surface, we're also seeing some pretty healthy um, Healthy earnings yeah. growth. And I think the challenge for markets right now is valuations are already very expensive and the consensus has been looking for strong earnings growth. And if we're if management or in the results there's any signs at all that maybe guidance is being lowered or there's question marks about a, a company's outlook to be able to sustain those earnings, we're seeing them get punished pretty heavily. And I think that's just we're seeing a bit of an expectations problem right now with how, how high valuations are that it's hard to drive the market um, even higher from, from current levels. And so that's been a, a bit of a challenge uh, this week. When we look outside of the U.S., though, the results have also been uh, pretty positive. We're seeing good corporate performance in Europe where earnings growth is coming in close to 15 percent for the Eurostock 600 index, which is a good result. Yeah. Uh, and Japan's also generating high single-digit earnings growth. So um, 
definitely strong earnings performance in the U.S., but it's also a global story uh, right now as well. And sticking with that global lens for a moment, the European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan both had meetings this week. What were the outcomes of those meetings, and do those outcomes change your view of those re regions at all? Yeah, I, I think from a European perspective, there weren't too many surprises this week. So uh, Mario Draghi didn't change policy, and it sounds like he's still pretty confident in the uh, macro outlook for uh, the Eurozone. Uh, broadly speaking, they seem to be gradually moving towards wanting to taper their asset purchases, but right now they're just not seeing quite enough inflation yet to make uh, that decision and pull the trigger on a, a wind down of uh, quantitative easing there. So no significant changes in Europe. Um, I think the Bank of Japan meeting was a, a bit more interesting where there's been a lot of speculation in the market that pretty soon the Bank of Japan might need to back away from uh, fixing the 10-year yield in Japan at 0%. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Governor Kroda kind of pushed back against that uh, overnight uh, here this week, where he kind of said their yield curve controlled policy is probably going to be in place for the longer term. And that was a slightly dovish development. Uh, we saw a little bit of yen weakness uh, around the Bank of Japan meeting. Uh, and that arguably is a, a positive tailwind for uh, risky markets in Japan like Japanese stocks. Hmm. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Paul, thank you for sharing your insights. Sure. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Rob Cittadini from Russell Investments. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.